too, was holding fights, hosting fights. The community just seemed to be very receptive to boxing. I did the first event at Packard High School, I believe. It sold out. Individuals couldn't get in. We had a name. KBA was something to be a part of. We had people that actually wanted to see us go someplace. The Kalamazoo Wing Stadium had game here, the hockey stadium, and we began to have fights out there. We would come out there and the whole crowd of people could recognize you as an amateur fighter. And they would know Mr. Bridges by name, they would know us by name, you didn't know anybody else in that whole arena, but that made you feel so good, you know, for my first fight. I got into the ring at Hackett High School's Har Freeman Gymnasium in late April of 1968, and I fought a gentleman by the name of Sonny Jordan. I not only knocked him out, but I knocked him out of the ring. And uh, <laughs> what a way to uh, come into the boxing game. I heard about a boxing team downtown Kalamazoo, and I heard it was coached by a gentleman by the name of Eddie Bridges. And he put me in the ring with his top fighter by the name of Arnold Mackey. Arnold and I went three rounds, three bloody rounds of boxing. And that was my first experience with competitive training. In two weeks, Eddie Bridges had me register to fight in the Michigan Golden Gloves in Grand Rapids. Golden Gloves is a major boxing event for amateurs in the country. It's a very coveted uh, title to win. Uh, and they can progress on through the novice class up to the open class. Then once they're in the open class, they qualify for national championship competition if they win the state championships. We escalated uh, a lot of us from the novice right into the open. I remember the first time I fought a man with hair on his face. I said, I'm getting ready to fight a grown man. And I won over this grown man. You know, say, fought the Golden Gloves. And, and that's something. Because whether you win or lose, it means you competed. And, and people respect that, I believe. The Golden Gloves was out at the food center. It was, it was old. It was about five, six thousand people. We were fighting guys from all over Michigan. Our family would go. My mother would go. My sister was giving them somewhere to go, something to do. When the crowd was so big, you know, you just start sweating and all the adrenaline be running. I lied about my age when I was 15 so that I could fight in the Golden Gloves. And we were in a different district from Kalamazoo. I never fought anybody from Kalamazoo in those Golden Gloves. Now, I will say this. I fought some guy, Julius Foster, I think his name was. Lionel Ford from Kalamazoo, he's fighting with a broken foot, okay? And he wins, not only beats the first guy he fights, but then he just tears Foster up. My next two years, uh, I was a state finalist in both years. Won the 1972 Michigan Golden Gloves in the 165-pound weight class. The Golden Gloves was a very um, scary thing at first for me. I was just noticing all the fighters coming up before me. I'm like, man, these guys are cold, you know. But Eddie Bridges, he, he told me, he said, man, you can handle these pros. What are you going to do about these guys here? I said, yeah, these don't hang with the pros, you know. <laughs> it really felt good, you know, to, to win, come on with the tro first place trophy. I wanted to win. I wanted to be a champion. I won one year, and then I won the next year. And, and I enjoyed winning, <laughs> winning the championship. Half of our whole uh, stable were champions. They were just one champion after another. In the timeline of 78 and 79, Kalamazoo had reached a pinnacle of, uh, of the beginning of a great heyday. At this time, the top amateur fighters were my brother Sean Thomas and Eddie B. Stokes. They went and became national champions in Hawaii in 1977-78 season. They came from all over to see, guess who was Eddie B. Uh, who was Sean Thomas? I got to travel. I, I, I got a lot of ink in Grand Rapids too. I fought, I trained for it. I dreamed, you know. This is the end of the I made it. When we reached a certain level, and I think this started around 78, they gave us Kalamazoo Boxing Academy jackets. Anytime you entered a tournament and won, you got a pendant. Not only did you get a trophy, you would get a pendant. Uh, so you actually had a letterman jacket after a while. Since we were in Michigan, I chose the colors of the University of Michigan, the blue and the gold. I chose to have the kangaroo with the glove. Everybody knew it was the KBA because they saw that kangaroo. We came in with the blue and the gold on. People stepped literally out of our way. We were the West Side 
champions, and Emmanuel Stewart's Crunk Gym was the east side of the state champion. I was representing Kalamazoo, and I wanted to be a champion because I wanted Kalamazoo to be something special. We actually recognized KBA as the best boxing gym around at that point in time. And every time a boxer from KBA went in the ring, you knew you had someone to contend with. We would go from Indiana, Ohio, uh, we toured the state of Michigan fighting. It got to be a big deal to have Kalamazoo fighters showing up. Fighters look forward to going home every day and reading the newspaper, picking up the Kalamazoo Gazette, and reading what we had done. You could always catch a highlight in the newspaper uh, from Jack Moss, you know, and so we, we all began to feel good. And the Kalamazoo Gazette, uh, they had a photograph of me when I knocked Sonny out. So that was big for my ego. I was 16 years old at the time. The Oliver Lewis's, the Lionel Fords, Courtney Hoopers, they are the catalysts that made Henry Grooms to have opportunities to make the KBA become nationally famous. I was a three-time Golden Glove champion, something that I will always be able to hold on to. Nobody can take away from me. To have your hand roll, raised in victory, is the greatest feeling of all.